Okay guys, we're gonna talk about a hot topic right now and that is foxes outside in the winter time. Huh, Baloo? Baloo says, not me. Not me, mm -hmm. mom. Let's do this a little bit so that, hey, that's my bottom, don't nip it. So, yeah, don't nip my bottom, that's rude. So foxes outside in the winter time. So we're gonna hit on a few things. One, the story of my fox has been outside, it's gone through the seasons, what do I need to do to make sure it's comfortable outside and is it comfortable outside? Second one is my fox has lived inside and I am just tired of having it inside, tired of the mess, tired of everything else. I want to move it outside, but it is January. Can I do that? And third is what a lot of us are experiencing here in the Midwest, Midwest sorry words, is a very warm start to winter and how do you work with the adjustments that are going on? So. Let's dive in first to the easiest one. And this is my fox has been outside. That's where it lives. It's gone through all the seasons. Great. So easy answer is your fox is great in the winter. In fact, it's probably loving the colder and cooler temperatures. So a fun fact, your Jeopardy fact, is a red type foxes. And that's what we're talking about with this stuff, guys. A lot of this applies to Arctic types, gray types. Um, it does not apply to your desert foxes like your fennecs, your bat ears, your pale. Those, if you live in the Midwest or in an area where it's chilly out, do not take them outside in the wintertime. They need to be inside at all times. Um, but we're talking about red type foxes. And again, this can apply to Arctics and grays as well. So you've had, they have been outside, they've gone through all those temperature changes. And your fun Jeopardy fact is red type foxes are found more places across the world than any other wild canid. Now, yes, people have introduced them to many of those places. They didn't naturally occur there. Humans introduced them there, but they're extremely adaptable. Their coats can get super thick or extra thin depending upon the environment that they are in. So that is an amazing feature that these guys have, which means that they are just fine outside and their bodies have a lot of built-in features that make them okay. Huh, Baloo? Yeah, you was a silly buddy. So these guys, a red type fox, some studies say different things. Some say they can stay warm up to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, others negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We say negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit to err on the side of caution, which luckily here in Ohio, we don't get that cold. Um, so these guys are naturally built in to do that. And they have some amazing parts and adapt adaptations to them that allow them to stay warm. So let's start out with the bottom of their paw pads get completely engulfed in fur. Their ears fill in with more fur. They can put on three to five pounds of fur and a little bit of a padding, a little bit of chub in there to prepare themselves for the winter to stay warm. So these guys naturally are ready for winter time. So when we're all bundled up and chilly as could be, these guys are loving it and having a great day. Now again, we're talking about foxes that have been outside, they have gone through the seasonal changes, their coats have adapted to that seasonal change. So they're thick, they're fluffy, they're looking like a big old marshmallows right now. So they are doing well. So what is critical though for a fox that you have outside is that it has a place to go where it can escape the elements. So it needs to have a place that's dry, that's warm, chunky. I know you guys don't always share mommy though. You both want to be center of attention. And you both can be at the same time. So you gotta have a place where they can go, and this is a requirement if a fox is outside, where it can stay dry, stay warm, get out of the wind, get out of the rain, get out of the elements, fill it with a bunch of straw, a bunch of bedding, anything that you can do to create a lot of insulation in there, a lot of padding so good that they can stay nice and warm. That is critical. Hi, Baloo. Hi, sweet boy. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Don't chew on my hair, please. No, you can groom it, just don't chew on it. I don't want to bob. And my head, don't chew on my head. Baloo. Now, let's talk about the others, and that would be a fox like Baloo here. So, you got a fox this past spring. They've been inside. You have been loving having them inside, but now you are just done. You are tired of having to do all the cleaning. You're tired of the destructive behavior. You're tired of the smell of all the urine and the pottying everywhere. I know, I'm your mommy, get over it. I'm Shanti's mommy too. And you are wanting to move them outside because you love them dearly. You don't want to get rid of them. You love them, they're part of your family, but you have had it with tending to all the extra work that goes in to having them in the house because they are crazy. Humbaloo, yeah, you're crazy. So you want to transition them to outside. 
Well, I hate to break it to you, but you can't do that in the winter time. So we talk about how their coats get super duper thick to prepare for winter time. Well, if you've had a fox inside, they, their coats have not had to adjust. Now they're thicker than they were in the summer for sure, because that's naturally what happens with a fox. But they're not as thick as they need to be, huh buddy? to be comfortable and be okay to be outside in the winter time without having a climate controlled space. So if you have a shed that's heated that you can attach their enclosure to and they always have access to going into that heated shed or into maybe a mudroom in your house that you know is heated, that's great. Then you can definitely have them out in an outdoor enclosure as long as they have access to that climate controlled space. Because their coat, yes, it's thicker, but it's not thick enough to keep them comfortable, happy, healthy in the winter time. They're going to be very cold and they've missed that opportunity for their coats to thicken and adjust. And if it does get thicker, which it can do if you put them outside, by the time it gets there, it's gonna be warming up and they've still gone through that uncomfortable period. So if you do have a fox that's been inside and you wanna move it outside, I hate to break it to you, but winter time is not the time to do that. You need to do that in spring and let them experience that change. Unless, like I said, you are attaching their enclosure to a space that is heated um, for them to go into where they tend to get out of the cold because their bodies are prepared to deal with that. Now, let's talk about the next thing. And that is something that we are experiencing right now at Walking Wild. You're not because you're an inside boy right now until the heat's done in the new barn and then you go outside. Cause then you have a climate controlled heat on space and it's gonna be so warm and toasty. So let's talk about um, warm winters. So here in Ohio and many Midwest states have gone through this, we've had a very warm start to winter. So we've had 60 degree days here in the past two weeks. We've had 50 degree days, today it was 40 degrees and tomorrow it's gonna be a low of three. So going from 40 degrees to a low of three is pretty dramatic. Well, because we've been uncharacteristically warm and not for one or two days here and there, straight for the past month, month and a half, we've been really warm. And so our foxes have started, some of them, to prematurely blow their coats. And that is a big problem because here in Ohio and in the Midwest and in many states, February and end of January is our coldest time. So as we are getting into our coldest time of the year, we have our foxes blowing their winter coats and what they need to stay warm and comfortable. So because of that, we're having to do a lot of extra measures to make sure that they are staying warm and comfortable. So that means giving them lots of extra bedding. That means creating den boxes inside of insulated spaces. So our new facility, um, we have, the electric has not gone in yet. It's, it's a sore topic. Um, so the heat hasn't gone in yet. Um, and so what we've had to do is, it is an insulated facility. It's already insulated and everything, but we've added because the foxes that are prematurely shedding, um, most of them are some of our newer crew that are down in that facility. Um, and so what we've had to do is put in extra den boxes for them, add extra bedding, add heaters in there because it's gonna be three degrees tomorrow and some of them are halfway in to their spring coat, to their end of winter coat. And it is far too chilly out for them to not have their winter coat. So we're having to take extra precautions. So if you do live in an area where it has been uncharacteristically warm and your fox has started to shed their winter coat, you need, Shanti, don't take my phone. You need to be aware of that and take the measures that are needed to keep them warm. You know, putting heaters out for them, giving them tons of extra bedding. And it might mean they have to come back inside temporarily. So if it's a really, really cold day where it's getting down in the, you know, the single digits in the negatives, they may need to come inside for a bit um, because it's just too cold for them out there if they have prematurely started to blow or blown their coats. Now, sometimes that can happen due to medical issues. So if that does happen, make sure that you do consult your veterinarian because sometimes there can be underlying issues going on, but more times than not, and what's going on with all of our crew is it is just due to unseasonally um, warm temperatures. And that's what we've been experiencing. So that's, I know that's been a wordy video for all of you guys, but this is a topic that I see a lot of people asking questions about right now. So, you know, keep in mind if your fox has been outside all winter long or all year long, they've transitioned with 
with the seasons. They are, their bodies are ready for winter. They are good, they're comfortable, they've got their full winter coat. Make sure it's 100% necessary. They have a shelter that is warm, that's insulated, that's filled with an insulator like straw or bedding that they can go into to get out of the elements, stay dry, warm up. If they have been inside all year and you're just needing a break and wanting to move them outside, this is not the time of year to do that unless they have, Shanti, don't take my phone, love, unless they have an enclosure that is attached to a heated space like your mudroom or a heated garage or heated shed so that they have a heated, and I don't mean a space heater, I mean a heated space that they can go into that they can stay warm. And the third thing, keep an eye out for premature blowing of coats due to unusually warm seasons like we've had this year. Um, and make sure that if that does happen, you're taking all the extra precautions needed to make sure that your fox is staying warm and happy. Don't chew on my hair, please, buddy. Um, and by the end of this, I'm gonna have a bob. So that is what I've got for you guys tonight. But let me know if you have any questions, if you need any help, ideas for creative dens. Hi, love. Thank you. That's a very good secret. Yeah, that's a good secret. Thank you. Um, if you need any creative ideas for den, if you need dens, if you need help, if you're wanting to help with the transition, what is, you know, whatever's going on, please reach out to myself, any of the other admins on the page, and we are happy to help and talk you through whatever you're going through. Thanks, guys. And I'm going to go make sure that the Jungle Book crew doesn't destroy everything, huh, Mowgli? Yeah, he's a good boy, good boy, Mowgli. Thanks, guys, and have a great night. See you later. Okay, guys, so you thought you were done with me, but you're not. Uh, so one thing that I realized I forgot to include when I was recording that video, Mowgli, don't take my phone. Isn't Mowgli, don't take my phone. Um, but is a question that we as a rescue had asked a lot. So Walking Wild is, as of this moment, home to 60 foxes. That number is going up again this weekend. Um, and so what do we do? Because we get foxes surrendered to us all year long that come from all those backgrounds that I just talked about, right? Outside all the time that have been inside and foxes that are prematurely blowing their coats. So we have all of those right now. Um, you know, foxes that have great winter coats, foxes that have been inside and foxes that are prematurely blowing. So with 60 foxes, obviously, we tend to experience the whole gamut of things. So what do we do? How do we work with that? Well, right now in my home <laughs> is 18 foxes. So we have our brand new indoor outdoor facility that is amazing. It's wonderful. It's insulated for a fox that has been outside for the transition like we've talked about. It is a really warm, great place to be because they're in an insulated inside space and then they have their outside space as well, which also has wind blockers. So they're not getting hit with blasts of winds no matter where they are. But I think I my phone. But our foxes, since our heat is not in yet, like I said, that is a little bit of a sore topic for me with electric and how long that's taking. But Lou, I'm going to have to hold my phone because you keep taking it. We have um, a pet surrenders that come to us that have not lived outside that are in that second group. Remember what I said? You can't put them outside in January. They are inside the house. So we have four foxes that live inside permanently and we're gonna, I'm gonna do some videos about foxes inside here um, as well. But we have 14 of those foxes that are waiting to go outside until that heat goes into our new facility that they will be transitioning out there. Um, and so then we've got the six foxes that are prematurely blowing their coats right now, which all, um, five of them are from our most recent fur farm rescue and one of them was a pet surrender. Um, that was used to being outside. So they are just experiencing that uncharacteristically warm time. So as a rescue, what do we do? Um, well, until our facility has its heat in it, um, the pet surrenders that are used to living inside um, are inside until that heat is in there because then they'll be in a fully climate controlled space. So people ask as a rescue, what do you do when that happens? Um, for us, we do not put the animal through any physical stressor. They're going through enough of an emotional stressor with that transition. So if they've been inside until that heat's in in our new facility, they come inside to one of our spaces, one of my guest bedrooms or other areas of my house. It's become a fox room um and then if they're used to living outside and their coats are great they're winter thick they go out there and then our foxes that are in that premature transition phase right now 
Um, none of them have blown their coats extremely dramatically yet. They're in the process of blowing them. So they right now have heaters on them, extra den boxes, extra bedding, um, and they are all down in our insulated facility. So they have that natural insulation that's in there. Um, and that facility does stay pretty warm. Um, so they are all great and fine and we check on them. In fact, um, I am reason I'm recording this so late is because I'm staying up extra late now so I can go check on everybody um, throughout the night to make sure that everybody is good to go. But they've got heaters on them and extra dens, extra blankets, extra padding, extra everything. And all they all have buddies that they snuggle with. Um, so they are all doing great. But I know that people will ask as a rescue with 60 foxes, how do you do that? How do you take into account all those places and transitions they're in? Um, and that's how we do it. I give up my house um, and sleep. So it all works out, but they're happy, huh? Say Shanti, I'm happy, yeah. So that is how that goes, guys. But yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And now you are truly done hearing me and seeing me. Have a good night, guys.